The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Jesus said, For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock he went out and found others standing around. And he said to them, Why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Holy and gracious God, I speak in your name and in your presence, asking that my words would be pleasing to you, guided by your Spirit, and that the hearts and minds of your people would be open to you. Through Christ our Lord, I pray. Amen. Don't you love Jonah? Jonah was displeased with the Lord. Don't, don't you love that? You've never been displeased with God, right? Jonah was so displeased, he said, well, okay, if that's the way you're going to be, just kill me now. <laughs> I love it. So, Jonah's life actually, or this incident in Jonah's life, actually becomes a wonderful embodiment of the parable that Jesus offers us in Matthew's Gospel this morning. And um, it's a hard parable. It, for me, it, it challenges us at, at a deep level and, and wants to invite us to, to go, oh, how do I say this? Go examine the foundations out of which we live. Examine the worldview out of which we live day to day. So, we need to back up a little bit. This, this parable, by the way, ends with, and so the last will be first, and the first will be last. And just preceding this had been a series of teachings of Jesus in which he said, 
but some of the, or many of the first will be last, and the last will be first. So the two teachings are connected. And there's, there's some other ways they're connected that I want to point out. But, but we need to back up a little bit to understand where this is coming from. So, so, so just before this, little children had been coming to Jesus to be blessed, and the disciples said, no, don't leave, the, leave the children out of it. They're just in the way of the Master. And Jesus said, oh, no, 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 let the little children come to me, for to such as these belongs the kingdom of God or the presence of God, and he blessed them. And attentive readers will remember that last week and the week before, we were, we were discussing life in the community, and Jesus referred to all of us as the little ones. So this image of children Wants, wants to remind us that all of us are the little ones in God's eyes. So immediately following that, the, the story of the rich young man that comes to Jesus and, and asks Jesus, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What commandments must I keep? Or really, excuse me, what good deed must I do to inherit eternal life? That's what he asks. Now, Jesus says, first of all, why do you speak to me of good? There's only one who is good, and that is God. And that is a poignant moment. What good deed must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you speak to me of good deeds? The only one who is good is God. Now, it's a little bit unfortunate, but the parable that, Jesus, that we heard this morning, at the end of it, when the landowner says, are you envious because I'm generous? What he literally says, are you envious because I'm good? It's the very same word that this, this young man asks Jesus, and Jesus replies, only God is good. And so, and the landowner says, he's a symbol for God in the story. Are you envious because I am good? So these two stories get tied together profoundly. So back up now to, the, to this, this young man. He's, we're, he's, we're told he's a rich young man. Comes to Jesus and asks, what, what good deed must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus says, only God is good. And then keep the commandments. And, the, and, uh, and Jesus names for him the human commandments. He says... Don't commit murder, don't steal, don't bear false witness, don't commit adultery, and, and love your neighbor as yourself. And the guy says, I've done all that. Now, th that's another sermon, but everything in me wants to say, really? <laughs> really, have you now? <laughs> but he says, I've done all that. And I think, I think, I think he, he means to be, he honestly thinks he has. And so Jesus says, well, only one thing you lack then Go sell all that you have. Give it to the poor. You'll have reward in heaven. Come follow me. And the guy walks away sorrowful because we learn he had many possessions. Now, again, a little aside. I like to think he came back later. You know, how many moments have you had in your spiritual life where you felt the Spirit was calling you to something and you said, not now, but you got another chance, right? So I like, to think, I like to think he came back. But he walks away, and Jesus says, how difficult it is for the wealthy to enter the kingdom. It is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for the wealthy to enter the kingdom. And the disciples say, well, Lord, if it's that difficult, who can do it? And Jesus says, with with humans, it's impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Again, very poignant truth. Only God is good. With God, all things are possible. So, then Peter says, well, Lord, what about us? Look at all that we have given up to follow you. What about us? Now, Peter's question is all about reward for what he's done. Can you hear that? And Jesus says to Peter, 
All who have given up a house and family and, and, and all the things that they have given up to follow me will receive reward a hundredfold and eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. Then he tells this parable. Now remember, parables are not illustrations. They're just other ways to make the point. And he tells this parable. And it's troubling. So the landowner goes into the marketplace four times during the day to hire workers. And, he's, and he says to them, to the first ones, he said, he makes arrangements that he'll pay them for a denarius a day, for the work, day's work. That, that is a day's wage. The other three times, he doesn't tell them how much he'll pay him. He says, well, just work out what's right. So he goes at nine in the morning and at noon and at three in the afternoon. And then, and then he goes the last time at five. And the way the day was divided up, the day's over at six. So by the time the people he hires at five get to the vineyard, they may have done nothing. And when the day's over... He pays them all the same, starting with the last ones. And by starting with the last ones, the ones who were hired first see what's happening. And by the time he starts to get to them, they're thinking, oh my goodness. He gave them the denarius that he agreed to give us. We're going to get more. And they don't. They all get the same. Now, I'm like Jonah. I'm displeased. <laughs> I don't like that. And it wants to disrupt us. That's the way parables are. It wants to pause and say, you think you know how things are, but I want you to think again. They all get paid the same. Now, how do we, how can we hear this? First of all, there is no injustice in it. We think there is. It's a, at first notice, you think it's unjust, but it's totally fair. He gave everybody what he... He, he, didn't, he didn't betray anything that he promised anyone. He only made a specific arrangement with the, with, the, with the men he hired first, and he paid them what he said he would pay them. Richard Rohr recently published a book. I, I actually, I'm not sure how recent. I recently came across it. Titled, Adam's Return. And it's all about initiation rights for men. And it, it applies to women too, but, but, but Richard wrote the book because he's really trying to challenge men and speak to men. And he identifies five themes that men need to be initiated into. Number one, life is hard. Yeah, I've got some, my children don't listen to these recordings, so I'm safe, you know. <laughs> I, I have children that are discovering that. It doesn't turn out the way you think it's going to. It's not easy. Life is hard. You are not important. Oh, don't you love it? Yeah. Your life is not about you. You are not in control. And finally, you're going to die. <laughs> I'm glad we laugh. I am. I'm glad we laugh. Life's hard. You're not important. 
Your life is not about you. You're not in control, and you're going to die. So, pause, we, you know, just again, pause for a moment. Only God is good. Now, I'm going to say something that I think we all think we think, and we think we believe, and we think we act on it. I'm going to suggest, I'm going to invite us to think carefully whether we really believe this, whether we really think it, and whether it really guides our behavior. Only God is good. Therefore, I cannot earn my way into heaven. I cannot achieve my way into heaven. Where I am and what I have and the goodness in my life, I didn't earn it. I didn't achieve it. I can't go accomplish it. It all flows from the goodness of God. The only one who is good. What good deed must I do to inherit eternal life? There isn't one. Only God is good. An entrance into the presence of God is only the work that God can do, not what I can do. It just begs us to pause a moment and look at how we look at our lives and then how we look at the others. The one, one well-known scholar among scholarly circles, uh, Gunther Borkham, you all probably have never heard of him, most of us, says this, every human claim shatters on the freedom and the greatness of God's grace. Every human claim shatters on the freedom and the greatness of God's grace or God's goodness. That's hard to get to. If we can get there, it's the profoundest freedom. Because life becomes rooted and grounded in the goodness of God, not working so very hard to be so very good, to make my way into God's approval somehow, to earn my way into whatever reward I think there is for me. We get, to, we get set free. And to let life flow out of this Goodness and graciousness of God that has no limits and no bounds. But here's the thing. i got to be willing to let God be good to the Ninevites. i got to be willing to not think, oh, God's good to me and not that person because somehow I'm better. Oh, that person is... is, is is destitute because of the decisions they've made. It's all their fault. Be with me now. It's easy to think that way. I'm where I am because I've earned it somehow. I made the right decisions. I've achieved this great life that I have somehow. Oh, I'm st I've started meddling, didn't I? Yeah. Yeah. Only God is good. All of us enter into the presence of God by God's grace and work, not our effort and achievement. Now, hear me. It's the greatest freedom if we'll move into it. Now, I, I'm no different than you. I've got 50 butts. I do. I mean, but, 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 but accountability and responsibility and consequences and if you do this, that's going to happen and you're responsible for yourself. Man, I got, I, right? Come on. Aren't you talk, don't tell me you're not going there. It's 
It's not that those things are not also true. It's there's this deeper truth, this profounder truth, this, this profound freedom. And when we get there, there's this, this wondrous thing. The human person does have divine life we, in, in her and him. We do. We are made in the image of God. And there is divine life in us. And at, at our deepest self, we want to be good. The deepest truth of the human person is I actually want to do good and to do the right thing. And if I live out of the goodness and the grace and the generosity of God, that's not going to be an excuse to go be awful because it's not in me to be that way. And so this, this deep teaching of the, the goodness of God that we would live out of and not judge ourselves and not judge the other, but to live out of the goodness of God the generosity of God, the grace of God, the abundance of God. And for me, everything changes as I find myself there. And from that place then, I don't just not judge the other, I don't judge myself. St. Paul actually said that. I don't even judge myself, he says. Because I'm God's servant, and that's God's business. I'd just rather live into the goodness of God and trust God's grace, God's goodness, God's benevolence, God's bounty. That is freedom. And abundant peacefulness. Because God really is good. God really is good. I have to say it again. God really is good. And I can trust that. Another way to say it, would you rather trust your achievement or trust the goodness of God? And if you want to trust the goodness of God and not your achievement, are you willing to let God be good to the other? Who maybe, from your point of view, doesn't work as hard as you do and hasn't labored as long as you have and came lately. It's challenging, isn't it? Amen.